Georgia Adderley, welcome to Challenger Chats. Having spent all day together, it's nice to be in separate rooms, isn't it? <laughs> exactly, just that. So your current world ranking is 96. Your highest world ranking is 90 back in October. You're three times British junior national champion and you're currently studying full time in applying sports science. That's right, that's me. First things first, like I've done previously on the Challenger Chats, I'd like to start with an exchange of facts. Now, given how much I know about you, this might be hard, but I'm gonna tell you three facts I know about you. And in return, I want you to tell me three facts that I might not know or the listeners might not know. Okay, number one, you're an auntie. I you... sure. <laughs> number two, you more often than not have a very messy squash bag. This may be true. <laughs> and number three, you're a Christian. I am indeed. All correct. All correct. Full right. marks for you. Okay, <laughs> my turn. Uh, on Christmas day, we never eat turkey. First of all. Second of all, I'm a quarter Welsh. And third, and finally, um, when I was a kid, I used to, instead of watching TV or anything, in my spare time, I used to play with these things called microstars, which are like mini footballers, like about this size, they had huge heads, and I would like make them play against each other, I'd like roll up bits of paper, and they'd play against each other, and I'd make goals and stuff, it was really fun, so there you go. So these microstars were your version of Barbies? Yeah, legit. I've still got some in the cupboard, I think. <laughs> nice one. Well, yeah, I didn't know any of those three facts, so that's know. great. So one thing that has been very apparent to me is that there was a Georgia Adderley who I knew before the pandemic. Lockdown hit last March. And then since we've returned, we're very grateful to have returned to training. I've been around a very different Georgia Adderley. Can you tell me what was lockdown like for you and what's what's changed? Yeah, so, I mean, lockdown was a big shock, obviously, and um, I kind of learned how to train properly, I suppose. Um, I learned a lot more about myself and about what I needed, um, and I started to really structure my week and understand why I was putting in every single session, and basically it's just made a huge difference. I did a lot of work with um, our performance lifestyle advisor um, at Scottish Squash and we worked a lot on the mental side of things and um, just kind of like getting to grips with like who who I am and like tackling big life questions because it was a great time to look at that and um, I started to figure that out and it's made a huge difference yeah so um, I guess for me I now approach training differently um, I am <laughs> I mean, you might remember me as someone who gets really, really frustrated and maybe I still do sometimes, but the amount of frustration is a lot less. And um, I really am enjoying the process of learning and growing as a squash player and a person. Um, and I think that that's been the biggest difference for me is I set out each week with a goal and every session has a reason um, instead of just going for the motions. And um, yeah, I started taking, I guess, like a bit more ownership of my training um, and realizing that failures are my own fault and um, trying not to make as many excuses, which is something that I did a lot of probably um, in the years gone by. When you say you asked yourself a lot of life questions, can you give us an example of one of those? Um, yeah, so a few things like um, I, I'm trying to think of the questions, like I guess one thing was like learn to love yourself. I think. Um, I realized that was so important that you can't just get affirmation from other people. Um, you require it from yourself and you need to know who you are as a person. Um, I also really learned a lot about my faith. Um, as you mentioned, I'm a Christian and um, yeah, I really grew my relationship with God and um, invested in the church and invested in the communities in the church. And um, yeah, I think that's had a huge um, impact on the way that I am. I'm being a bit more maybe chilled and relaxed and I guess a new way I'm trying to live is like in the moment 
and just taking each day as it comes and being thankful for the things that I have. Um, and I think a lot of that comes from my faith. So, yeah. Just on your faith, how do you think that translates to on court? Um, yeah, so like as Christians, we believe we, we, we're on this planet for a purpose and we want to share uh, the word of God and um, share the Bible and share the gospel. And um, something that as Christians in sport, we try to look at is trying to be a good witness and trying to be, um, I guess, respectful of yourself and other people. Um, and also just being, uh, I think a big thing for me is realizing that like I've been given a gift to be able to play sport and I'm very lucky that I've been able to do that. So I want to go and try and do the best that I possibly can with that gift and do everything I can to make the most out of it because I've been given it for a reason. Um, I think that's the biggest learning that I've had over the past few months anyway. It sounds like gratitude's played a massive part. Would you say coming out of lockdown and being able to go back on court again, that's something you felt? Yeah, it's unbelievable. Like, I think um, my mum was in, had to be in, like, was in the vulnerable category um, during lockdown. And she she really struggled with that mentally. It was really hard. Um, and I think I was able to get back to training. And now I'm still able to train and I'm able to do uni. And life is just good. Like, yeah, we're not able to have competitions. And yeah, that sucks. Yeah, we can't see our friends. That sucks. But actually, I'm happy. I'm healthy. I'm able to do the things that I enjoy every day. And there's not many people right now that can do that. So I'm so thankful for all that. Um, and yeah, like you say, like we got sent an infographic the other day that said there are 7,000 people in Scotland wanting to play squash right now and only 16 to 20 can actually play. And I think that was just I was just huge. And I think just being on court, I want to enjoy every second that I'm on there and take the take the most of the opportunity that I've got right now. So, yeah. Was there anyone or any people in particular that helped you during this time that you've gained all this new gratitude and new level of appreciation for, for squash? Um, yeah, I think, um, to be honest, there's loads of people. Um, I think Mary played a huge part. We did loads of work in the previous years and then she she actually had six weeks out because she got concussion and... Uh, and yeah, so that was a that was a big thing. And then um, Paul was incredible, and we spoke every week, every day about training, and um, just started to understand the game a little bit more. Um, and like you and my teammates, um, like being able to chat with you guys, message all the time, sending voice notes, FaceTiming, all the little things. Just like um, I think, obviously, you know me pretty well, and you've seen me grow up. You've seen me change from this little stroppy teenager to hopefully a bit more of a woman now um and yeah I think you've you've been there for me and there's been loads and loads of other people who've been there my family I mean it's too too many to count really um, and too many to say but it's just been huge really it's been amazing just just on that Mary is performance lifestyle yes advisor yes and Paul Paul Bell the national coach yep you are correct sorry Going back to the studies, how do you find the balance between studying and being a full-time squash player? Um, I mean, it is tough. Um, I mean, we're at Friday here um, and I am absolutely knackered. Everything hurts, my brain hurts. Um, and I'm very excited for Sunday rest day. Um, so it is tough, but I've learned to like fit everything in. So basically my day looks like wake up, have breakfast, train, uni, train, collapse on the sofa. I have lunch and dinner and various snacks in between there if anyone was concerned about my eating habits. Um, but yeah, so that that that's my day and, and, it, and it works. Like um, I've got, I'm so lucky, I, I still live at home. So my mom and dad are amazing. They cook me meals and do my washing embarrassingly. Um, but I'm okay with that. They're okay with that, I think. Um, so yeah, so I'm able to do that and um, that's that works well. And I'm really enjoying it this year. I think that's the biggest thing for me. And first, and, I'm in third year now, so I'm first and second year at uni. It doesn't count in Scotland. And basically I didn't enjoy it. I didn't invest in my studies enough. Whereas now, hopefully, I'm kind of seeing that a bit more in my results that I'm starting to really invest in my studies, learn more, read more. Um, and it excites me now, which is great. 
Where do you find your daily motivation at the minute with without there being tournaments? Um, I think the future. I think um, I've got a couple of goals. I, I uh, would love to make the 2022 Commonwealth Games team. And also in the future, I want to be world number one. That's the that's the ultimate goal. And I'm not afraid to say it. And um, I think every day I step on court with that in the back of my mind and go and try and make the most out of every session that I have. Um, so that's where my motivation comes from. I, I haven't struggled with motivation yet, thankfully. Um, and I think I'm just being able to put in weekly goals, which has been really helpful. Now, it wasn't always just squash. You played football for Scotland under 15, 16 and 17. You no longer play football. Can you tell us about that decision? Yes. Yeah, so basically I've been sporty since the age of four or five you know, zero actually, I just couldn't stop moving. Um, and um, yeah, I played football for Spartans, they're a club in Scotland um, until I was 16 and played football before I even played squash. Um, so yeah, I basically played them both in most of high school. In fact, all of high school. So I just did the five years at high school um, and it was intense. I had, I was juggling two sports. I was traveling around Europe every weekend, which was great and so fun, um, but certainly very full on. Um, I got to the point where I picked up an eggle, um, it wasn't going away. And actually what I needed was to say, look, just stop. You need to slow down. You need to just chill out and you need to just basically take some time off. So I ended up having to take five months out because of a hamstring injury, which was a very challenging five months for someone who never stopped moving for 16 years. Um, but yeah, I learned again, like I learned a lot about myself in that period. And um, I decided to stop football because I, I, I want, I wanted to be a professional athlete. That's, that's been the dream since I've maybe like eight and um, didn't matter the sport. It was just the dream. I remember writing a P6 story it was like what do you want to be when you're older and it was like I want to be a professional footballer and pro play for Arsenal and uh, <laughs> I've still got that somewhere in my house so um, yeah it's I basically made the decision because I felt like I had a better mindset when I played squash and um, in football I loved it it was so fun and but I just decided that um, it'd be best to stick with one and try and do the best that I could at that one um, which I'm very happy with my decision now. And um, yeah, I'm glad I made the decision when I did as well. Do you think playing another sport helped you with your squash? Hugely. Um, I think we see that certainly in Scotland. I don't know about other countries. Almost all of the top players um, have played a sport. Mainly it's football. Um, but there are some who've played rugby and other things like that. And um, they, they've they all played until they were like 15, 16. Um, and I think this is something I, I'm really passionate about it. I'm really passionate about encouraging people to just do as much as they can, because I think it can prevent burnout. Um, obviously, we so it's something I'm really interested in is looking at um, why females drop out of sport at the age of 16, 17, 18, even younger than that. And I think sometimes it's because there is too much focus on one sport. They put too much pressure on themselves. And um, yeah, so I think for me, it made such a massive difference. And it meant if one wasn't going well, I could just jump over to the other one and I'd kind of forget about it. <laughs> um, not that that's the best thing in adult life, but uh, certainly when I was a kid, it worked really well. And um, I, yeah, I love playing them both. There's transferable skills and um, being able to play in a team is important as being able to play by yourself. Um, so yeah, learn so much from doing them both at the same time. And of course you support Leeds United, don't you? Oh, absolutely not. <laughs> I actually, uh, much to the disgrace of many of the Scottish boys, I was a Celtic fan till I till they started losing to Rangers again. Um, but I now don't support them. I'm, I, you know, I, in the back of my head, I'm a bit of a Man United fan, but that's it really. Um, but I'll support Leeds United for you, Lisa, don't worry. I really appreciate that, Georgia. So my final question for you today is, what two attributes do you believe you must have to become a world champion? Um, I've probably got three, if that's allowed. I, um, as people in the world, 
bad things happen and being able to overcome them and come out stronger is um, a huge attribute that I think is required. Um, I think being adaptable and being able to um, not only train in one situation, but train in other situations, being able to change your plans in a second and still make the most out of something is something that um, I'd, I think is really important as well. Um, I also think taking ownership over um, your successes and failures is huge. Um, and being able to say, yeah, that was my fault and being able to go actually know that I don't have an excuse right now. Like the top players in the world, when they lose, they're not going, oh, it's because of this injury or it's because the ref did this. Um, and I think that's something that is a, has been a huge learning and something that I'm working on every day to try and get better at, especially that one. Um, yeah, I would say those three are pretty big. Well, thank you very much for opening up to us, George. I've really enjoyed getting to know you a little bit more.